Hi. Welcome and greetings. This is going to be my first session of new sibyls and decoding the Bible slash sibyl. I'm going to start by telling you a little bit about my journey to this point. I was not raised in traditional religion, yet I did seek out religion and the Bible and have read the Bible through trials and non-trials, mostly when I was in my early 20s. I'd gotten into some trouble and went to jail and everybody gets the Bible when they go to jail. So I read the Bible there. And even there, I believe I had somewhat of a small miracle because I remember thinking, how come there's not a lot about the she, even if it was Mother Earth, but the idea of a feminine divine. And I had opened up to the Bible somewhere and I haven't been able to find it since, where all the beginnings started with she. So over the years, different learnings. I'm a uh, ex-massage therapist. I'm a Reiki practitioner. And I also studied the universal laws, the 12 universal laws. Even before that and during that, a lot of things I would think about were some of the things that were in the Bible describe certain people, beings. Even the description of God has woolly hair and bronze-like skin. The fact that Jesus was born in the, in the Middle East made me think that maybe he was darker than what we've been shown. And so, what I had been shown. So I just kind of kept on the path. And at some point in my mid-30s, I started just studying more things after the towers in New York happened. I encouraged myself and was encouraged to study about people from other regions. And during that, I also discovered about Santeria, Europa religion, that comes from Africa and has been called other names such as Kanandabli and Budun or Voodoo. And even myself had a very dark interpretation of Voodoo and other cultures, my own culture actually, uh, religious practices or holy practices. So I just kept on my studying and more recently, about a year ago, I was gifted this book by Mama Zogby about the Sibyls, the first prophecies, Mamiwata. Mamiwatu is another name. The truth and the, the truth and basically the plagiarism of the Sibyl's writings or the first prophetess's writings that are now what we call the Bible. And I have been doing extra research and checking into things and over the last year also going into the Bible, which I've actually changed the front of it. This version that I have is the New International Version. And I actually changed the name on purpose. <laughs> and um, through this, started going through Psalms and other parts of the Bible and changing it to lady, goddess, uh, princesses. And I started noticing some little things. And one of them is when, when there are certain statements, you will notice it will say princes is princes is meaning the male masculine but if you put that together you have princesses or you'll have god is and you'll see god is so the more studying i did the more i was excited and also a little sad at some of the information i found out because some of the people and beings that have been written about males in our Bible may not have even existed, were beings that were created to push the patriarchal agenda, to usurp the voice of the Sibyls, or the Mamiwatu, or the prophetess, or the woman. So, 
one of the other things I did find out is if you look at the names of the sibyls, they match certain writings. And it is written that Cume, which links to Cumaic, but Cume is a very famous sibyl. She's known to either be two different sibyls in two different places or a sibyl that lived over a thousand years. But the theory is that she created the alphabet, actually how we write and speak, which would make sense. Well, in our in our own in this Bible that I have, it starts off with the beginning of all of the chapters. It gives you the contents and it breaks it down. The books of the Old Testament and then the books of the New Testament. Well, that's pretty common. In most books you will see this. What I found interesting is on the next page it has the alphabetical order of the Bible. So what I have begun is rather than start from the beginning of the book by the chapters, I'm starting with the beginning of the books with Acts, because I believe that Acts is actually the beginning of what were the books of the Sibylia, the sublime prophetesses, the prophets of what we now call Jesus Christ, or the Trinity, because also one of the names of the Mamiwatas is the Trinity. So with Acts, without going for too long, uh, and before I start with Acts, so the story is, there's two stories about the Sibyls and about the books of the Sibyls. The main most common story is that Kume had nine books and offered them to the king. And he rejected the books at, for a certain price. He rejected the books. She burnt three of them. She went back, offered the same price. He rejected. She burnt three more books. He took the books. The story is he took the books and then they were placed in the library of Alexandria and that Alexandria burned down. There are conflicting stories about that. There are stories that the library of Alexandria was actually robbed and then destroy it, which would make more sense with all the information that was inside of it. And there's a story that it burnt and all this information was lost. Whatever information is still out there is kind of pieced around. So with that said, the Bible is supposed to be four books, right? I'm gonna double check this. I'm gonna double check this. It might be five books. Three books in the Bible? No. In the, the Bible says, um, so in Genesis it says, this Genesis is the first book in what is called the Pentateuch. So we looked up Pentateuch. Pentateuch means 50, I believe. And it's also a day that is celebrated, which I looked up. Okay. Um, so it means five books maybe 50 books. Anyhow, I believe either there was more, uh, more information gathered and that was added to the Bible, or those three books were then divided into five books, which is now what we call the Bible, aka the Sibyl. So with Acts, um, what I do is I look at it and it's original um, printed form of what was given uh, and published within the Bible, whichever Bible, this is what I have, the New International Version. And in the introduction, the Acts of the Apostles. Apostles also means messenger. I also believe it means person who speaks many tongues. It just sounds that way as a civil. So, uh, Apostles is the second part of Luke's history. So, I believe that many of the names in the books have been changed 
Uh, I believe that Luke is actually Uke, which is where we may get the name Ukulele. Luke's history. It was written so that we could have the true story of how the church began and grew, the Christian church. This book especially tells about the work of the two apostles, Peter and Paul. I believe their names were actually Petra and Awu. <laughs> Females. Uh, Peter is a central person involved in beginning the church in Jerusalem, and Paul is important. Is the important missionary who went out to nearby countries to tell others about Christ. Acts can also be called the Acts of the Holy Spirit because it teaches about the coming and the work of the Spirit. The book of Acts teaches three things about the early church. What the message of the early church was. Two, how the Jews rejected this message and how God sent the apostles to the Gentiles who accepted the gospel. And three, how the early church was treated by the local and Roman government. This is very interesting because the first church was established for the Mamiwatu churches, temples dedicated to the mother. And so as I began reading this, what you see is actually what is happening to the sublime line. This is actually the beginning of the end. This speaks about the acts, the miracles, that the prophetesses were able to perform and those that were part of that um, priest priestesshood there were some men but most of most of what is written was gifted through the, the female the mother the mamawatu so through this part i'm just going to start with ox one two let's see Acts 1, 1 through 1. We're going to do Acts 1. And what I do for the best I could. So we start with Jesus. Or she is, or SU. Because during the time of when this was written, there were no J sounds. There was no Y sounds. So my guess is that Jesus is either a person or an idea. So for now, I'm gonna name Jesus, Jesus and Eshu, Eshu, which is also one of the Yoruban Elishas. Jesus take it up to heaven, Eshu. In my former book, Theophilus, which is the name of the Sibyl, I wrote about all that Eshu began to do and to teach until the day she was taken up to heaven. After giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles she had chosen. After this suffering, she showed to these men and gave many convincing proofs that she was alive. She appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the queendom because King and Q, K and Q make the same sound, kingdom or queendom, of goddess. On one occasion, while she was eating with them, she gave them this command, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my mother promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John, or Joan, Johanna, baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So when they met together, they asked them, Lordess, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? She said to them, It is not for you to know the times or the dates the mother has sent by this authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witness in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth realm. These are our names of Sibylls. After she said this, she was taken up before their very eyes and a cloud hid them from her sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as she was going 
when suddenly two men. But if you break two into women, suddenly women, two men it says, but it's actually suddenly women dressed in white stood beside them. Women of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? The same issue who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen them go to heaven. And we go into Matthias, chosen to replace Judas. Matthias is also named Lucibilia. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day's walk. So on Sabbath, you were not allowed to work, and that is about three and a quarter mile, about 100 meters from the city. They took a Sabbath day's walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Petra, Johanna, Sianus, Andrea, Philippia, and, and Thomas, or Thomas, Bartholomew, and Bar Otolomew and Matthew or Matthew Sam's Amazons of Alpheus Simon the Zealot and Judah Amazon of Sam's they are all joined together constantly in prayer the women and Mary the mother of Eshu and with this siblings or others. In those days, Petra stood up among the believers, a group numbering about 120, and said, others, or brothers and sisters, meaning we're in a group. The scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke long ago through the mouth of David. David is actually Diana the blue black goddess or the one who can speak for God out of the mouth of Diana concerning Judah who served as a guide for those arrest, who arrested Eshu she was one of our number and shared in this ministry so the next part where it talks about what happened to Judah is I I'm not sure that that actually happened. I believe that that may be added to the story. I'm still, I'm still deciphering this part. Talked about the field of blood that Judah went to. I believe that the field of blood where Judah went to, there are stories written about how civilians and or mermaids were gathered up in drones and burned. And that those places could be called the fields of blood. Moving on to Acts 1.20. Um, Petra said, it is written in the book of Psalms. Psalms, songs, sounds very similar. May this place be deserted, but there be no one to dwell in it. Meaning, leaving the female out of the Holy Bible, the Holy Scripture. May another take this place of leadership. This is the picture. Acts 21. Therefore, it is necessary to choose a woman who has been with us the whole time. The lady, Eshu, went in out among us, beginning from John's baptism to the time when Eshu was taken up from us. For one of these must become a witness with us of this resurrection. So they proposed to the women, Josephina and Barbara Sus, also known as Justice or Justius, Sibelius names, and Matthias, also Sibelius names, 
They prayed. Lady, you know everyone's heart. Show us which of these two you have chosen to take over this apostolic ministry, which Judah left. Then they cast lots, which is throwing stones. And the lot fell unto Matthias, so she was added to the eleven apostles. So that is the end of Acts 1. And I believe that this is, so I'm just going to continue this. I believe that this is part of my workings in this new age time. I'll be doing my own studying. I'll be bringing more to these discussions. And I'll be learning along. I'll be learning more of the prophetess's names and um, the Sibelius names and learning more about the connections. We already know that much of what is written is also metaphors for practices of meditation, healing, herbs, um, fasting, divination, blowing lots. So there is a lot in these teachings because that's ultimately what they were. We weren't looking for something specifically to teach us how to live in the sense of how to live. We were teaching something about how to be on this planet with each other. All the teachings, how to remain healthy, how to heal self and others, and how to continue to work as a community through the unconditional loving eyes of a mother. So I hope to see you next time. Have a great rest of your day.